Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be teaching you how to use variables in the C programming language. Now there are many types of variables inside C. Um, the most common ones are bool, char, short, int, long, float, and double. Now each one of these has a different size of how much information it can hold. Um, a char stands for character and it's only one byte which means it's pretty small um, and then the largest is um, usually double being eight bytes and um, there's some other ones like I mentioned long earlier as a common one but there's a less common one which is long long which is also eight bytes as double is. Um, the size however is completely machine independent so are machine dependent so if you have a 32-bit operating system then the size will be different for each one of those for you or if you have a 64-bit it will be different for you um, I'm on a 64-bit so I can store a lot more information in integers than someone on a 32-bit so if you're on a 32-bit I believe it's like 5 billion or something like that is like the biggest number for an integer um, if you're on a 64-bit I have no freaking clue um, I think it's somewhere around like 21 billion. Anyways, uh, let's get to actually making one of these. So first off, let's just make a simple number, an integer. In order to do this, we have to first tell C that we're making an integer variable or whatever type of variable we're trying to make. A variable will store information or the value in that uh, variable. So if we want to make a variable x, it will be equal to 5. So it's essentially algebra, but we're writing it. So yay, algebra. It's come back to haunt you again. Anyways, to make the integer x variable, we're going to type int, which just says it's an integer. And then we're going to name it, which is x. Um, most often, you will not see any special character in front of it, but the ones that you can use um, to name a variable are the at sign, the hashtag, the dollar sign, and the underscore are the only signs you can use in order to name a variable. Um, all the other special ones like an exclamation point, um, modulus or percent, a caret, ampersand, asterisk, parentheses, um, hyphen, plus, and equals and plus will all be invalid names. Also another thing is that if you have two words in a variable like small variable you want to have uh, the first word a lowercase and then every other word that follows it being a capital or starting with a capital. Anyways so we'll just say int x and then semicolon which just says okay we've actually made the variable x. We've made it so it's actually stored somewhere and that we can write information to it. So we um, will make another line and just say x is equal to 5 semicolon which just says now x has the integer value of the constant 5. Um, however this can change and we'll go into that in the next tutorial after I've shown you how to assign your variables. Um, so there we go it works but how will we show the user? Well, printf is the solution to this. So if we wanted to show the user x is equal to 5, we would say printf, and then in here we would type our parentheses and say um, x is equal to modulus or percent sign d. And this just says that we want to replace um, modulus d or percent sign d with another variable of the integer type. There are also other things like modulus um, C and modulus F for different types of variables, but modulus D is reserved for integers. So it will take whatever variable it is and say, okay, we want to put this in the string. We want to put whatever its um, value is in the string, but it has to be an integer type, and that's how we're putting it in the string. So then we'll do a comma and then X, which just says that's the variable we want to use, and semicolon. Now if we save this and compile and run, we'll see that it says x is equal to 5. Um, and everything else worked fine. So that's how you would show your user what the variable is. 
Um, if we wanted to change the value of it, we could go down below where it says x is equal to 5 and say x is equal to 6. And that would change the value of it. If we run and com if we compile and run that, you'll see x is equal to 6. Um, there are also some other operators that we'll get into later on, but um, you can reassign the value later on in your program. All right, so let's make. Um, well, I'll just show you one more thing. When you declare a variable, um, a lot of the times you'll see something like int x semicolon, and that just says, "Okay, we made the variable." But sometimes you'll see someone who says int x equals five semicolon, which just says x exists and it is five, and that is initializing the value. As it's created, you automatically give it a value. Um, some people have different ideas about if you should do that or not. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, you'll probably see me more often than not kind of interchangeably use them. You won't see one uh, used more often than the other in a program. Uh, but it's really up to you how you do that. Now let's make another type of variable and just keep this simple. We're going to be using uh, int or whatever type x and then x is equal to whatever. So let's change this to a character. Now a character type variable, in this case uh, char x, can only be equal to one character at a time. It can be equal to an ampersand or a caret or whatever you want it to be, but it can't be equal to multiple ones. You can't have it equal to the dispelled the. You can only have it equal to one, unless you make an array of it, which we will be getting into arrays um, further on in the series, probably around uh, 12 or maybe even 15. Anyways, if to assign a character value to it, we're actually going to say x is equal to, and then single quotations or um, apostrophe and then we're going to say the letter and then end it with a apostrophe or single quotation I'll just call them single quotations from now on and then a semicolon which says okay it's equal to T and that is all that we want to say about this um, that's the only statement we're, ma we're making now in order to format a character it's actually um, pretty like intuitive of what it would be it's just modulus C and modulus is the name for the percent sign in programming so you'll also hear me say it say modulus all the time but X is equal to modulus C and now if we compile and run this we should get X is equal to T um, which is what we set X equal to so that's how you would format a character and that's also how you create and set a variable equal to a character Um, so what is next? There are two other types of variables, doubles and floats, which are for decimals. If we made an integer x like this, let me format that again, and we say x is equal to 10.1, we will only see c when we print it out, or we'll only see 10 when we print it out, because if it's not um, a double or a float, it gets rid of anything after the decimal point before um, the value is actually stored in there. And so an integer cannot um, store decimal points at all. If you want to store a decimal point like 10.1, you have to change it to um, float or double. Floats, um, you may see just as often as doubles, but they're smaller and cannot hold as much information in them. Uh, but oftentimes you don't have to store information in a double because doubles are pretty big like I said they're like the biggest type um, on most computers and can hold a bunch of information so a lot of times you'll probably see a float more often than a double um, in order to format a double you can use an F or a G kind of like um, when you're making functions in uh, algebra you'll see F or G a lot floats are the same anyways as you see here it now says x is equal to 10.10000. Now that's because a float actually has that much information in it by default. Um, it, the way that it stores information is it has all zeros in front of whatever you write, 
but it also has zeros at the end of whatever you write unless you overwrite that information so unless we specified what those zeros should be they'll show up as zeros um, however in probably like two or three more tutorials I'll show you how to format those out before you print it because there is a way to do that but um, if you make a float it will be and you set it equal to 10.1 it'll actually show up as 10.10000 uh, um, by default so you'll actually have to specify those numbers or uh, get rid of them yourself now the other one is a double which I can show you guys that as well and if we compile and run that we should get the same thing with all the zeros and stuff um, now one thing I want to show you guys is if you try to format it as an integer oh, sorry about that um, compile and run that you'll get some really weird stuff um, the reason for that is because because a double is so big it has more information in it and it basically cuts out pieces of binary in the memory when it converts it to an integer so it's best not to try and format things as a different type unless you know that the size will fit perfectly um, and doubles are so big it usually won't happen but um, don't do it it's just bad I mean doubles are so huge it will not be the integer you want it to be um, and it's like that for all types you do not want to try and make a integer a character I mean if you want to make a character an integer that would work fine I'm not going to ex explain how that works in this tutorial um, but the actual value of a character is equal to a number somewhere along the line and it will stay the same value if it's an integer but an integer will not be the same value if you convert it to a character um, if it's too big for a character to hold um, so yeah that's pretty much all for how to define one of a certain type um, a short int is a bit smaller than a normal int and you don't have to actually specify it as a short int you could just say short but it's basically the same thing as an integer just about half the size um, you don't really I don't see them used that much I'm sure they're used in a lot of things but um, they're pretty much just you don't really need to use them unless you're really trying to be like um, resource um, simplistic and you don't want to use a lot of memory but uh, they are there and so it's good to know another one is the long type which is supposed to be for holding uh, bigger numbers than what a normal integer can and then there's also the long long type which instead of being like a double where a double can hold um, decimal points a long long is the same size but it just holds gigantic numbers without the uh, floating point so there you go that's pretty much all the types um, I've shown you how to assign them a long long will be uh, formatted pretty much the same way as any other integer and so yeah if you guys have any questions or comments if you want to correct me on something that I said, like maybe there actually is a formatting uh, like modulus L specifically for longs, uh, go ahead and tell me and I'll be sure to add an annotation somewhere in this video. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll be seeing you later.